May your love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles without number surround me, my sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May all who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, aha, aha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. Do not delay. Um, anyway, I can never forget, I was doing um, a service in Kempville Hospital in the palliative section. And this man had brought his mom and she was 95 or something like that. She was, um, had lost almost all of her sight. And so he brought her in and um, at the end of the, he, so he was singing into her ear. But at the end of the service I thought, you know what, we're supposed to sing Jesus Loves Me. And um, I could see her face start to smile. And she sang every verse with me. And he was singing and he was crying. And I was crying. And God was moving. God was moving. So people that have grown up on hymns, no matter where they are, they can remember them. So sing, 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 people. But we're going to sing this for Alice this morning, and I'm sure she'll hear. Thank you. 
And God really challenged me with what does your relationship with the Lord look like? What does your praying look like? So I'm going to ask you the same thing. What does your relationship with God look like? And what does your praying look like? Psalm 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. But lots of us go, if it is to be, it is up to me. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he did everything else. That's what Psalm 40 tells us. It says he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth. A hymn of praise to our God. So, do I wait on the Lord? Do you wait on the Lord? Or do we spend our time and energy in anxious fretting? See, waiting feels passive. But I am, and I must be, completely out of control. There is nothing I can do. So how do I wait? How do you wait? We can learn a lot about our waiting ability, our inner state of being, by thinking about how am I at a stop sign? How am I with certain people? How am I behind slow drivers? Connie and I came home from Kempville on Friday behind the slowest farm tractor. And we came all the way from Kempville to the road that goes to Mountain. And I thought, dear God, please don't let us see an accident because there was always stuff coming the other way. And so very few people could get around this guy. But I had to be home to go babysit. And I thought, hmm, we need to go a different way. How am I behind or in front of a slow computer? During our Zoom service, I couldn't go to the end of my slideshow. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this figured out. I'm going to, because they could hardly see the words. It would not go. It just would not go. And it's like, well, can you see them this small? Okay, work. And of course, when I, when I stopped the service, it worked. <laughs> it did. It did. What has us down in that pit? Our family? They sure can, if we let them. When we think about our sons and our daughters, um, what about your job? What about finances or bills that are due? What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Can any of those put you down in a pit, or is it just me that finds myself there on occasion? See, behind your mask, you all think you're safe, but I can see your eyes. And I know, I know that you've each experienced pits, let me tell you. We've walked through some of them together, and I'm sure we'll walk through more. Corey Ten Boom says, or said, worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrow, but today of strength. Today of strength. So when we want to know about waiting, who else do we look to but Jesus? Jesus was so confident in who he was, who he is, and whose he was, that he always kept his eyes on the Father. And everything he did was because the Father told him to do it. When, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he didn't sit there and worry for four days. He didn't think, oh, I better go right now. He waited. He waited. And then he showed up. A miracle happened. When Jesus went into that temple to flip those tables, it wasn't because he went in there in his own strength and said, oh, you rotten people, look what you're doing in my father's house. But he did go in there going, you are desecrating my daddy's home. And this is not to be. But he went in the father's strength. He kept his eyes always, always on the father. I don't think he was ever impatient or worried. In fact, in Matthew 6, it 
it says, I tell you, do not worry, oh you of little faith. This is Jesus talking. For your heavenly Father knows what you need. He's talking about you don't have to worry about what you wear, what you eat, where you go, you little birds. I'll take care of you. Look at my flowers. Look at my birds. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In John 16, Jesus gave this promise to his disciples just before he went to that cross. And it's to us too. You will pass through a time of intense sorrow when I am taken from you. But you will see me again. And then your hearts will burst with joy. With no one being able to take it from you. Do we focus on that he is coming again and we will see him face to face? We should. We should. For here is eternal truth. When that time comes, you won't need to ask me for anything. But instead, you will go directly to the Father and ask Him for anything you desire. And He will give it to you because of your relationship with me. God tweaked how I viewed prayer this week just a little bit. And it was always just crawling on my Father's lap and saying, I need this. This is who I'm praying for. This is who I'm praying for. And, it, and I'm praying because Jesus made it possible for me to do this. Just made a big difference to me. I think we all need tweaking every once in a while. At least I do. And in Ephesians, why? Because he is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to his power, that power that raised him from the grave, people, is in us, at work in us. The Passion Translation says it this way. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. And we've talked before about how at least I can dream big. I can dream big. And I think you probably can too. And he goes beyond all that. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly, constantly energizes you. What we need is not what God can give us. What we need is God himself. God himself. And when we get that, when we get done. Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations, and he talks about his pet. I have been deprived of peace. <clears throat> Are you deprived of peace? Today? Yesterday? In the last week? I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall, and it's good to remember where we were and the place that Jesus has taken us to. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the one who seeks him, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And remember, hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. We need to change our perspective. Do you not know 
Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He's the creator who spoke, who imagined all these things, each of the different flowers, and when they open up, and when they close, and how the bees go and get pollen and, and spread that along. He created all those animals. Each, I'm going to send you out an email a little bit later, and it tells so many specific ways that God designed every animal so perfectly. The elephant to be so big and all its legs, and they needed fulcrums to raise that weight off the ground and the horse goes up on its front legs and the cow goes up on its back legs. The flowers, that there's a botanist and he, that he said, if I just had a perfectly controlled thing, I could tell you the time of the day by every flower that opens and closes and when they do because God has designed everything so perfectly and he has designed you. He's designed you that you can transform your whole body and your whole way of looking at things by renewing your mind. He's made that brain so incredible that you, by what you focus on and what you believe, can change the way you feel, the way you act, the way you live, and the way you affect the world. And that
you were just waiting until the time was right when you came. And your blood was shed for me and for each one here. For each one that believes in your name. May that reality so, so consume us, so fill us, that we cannot be dragged down by any accuser. We stand before you, Father, because of what Jesus did on the cross. Washed clean, white as snow, by his precious blood. And you, Holy Spirit, came to live in our hearts and you renew that truth over and over and over again. What you did, Jesus, was enough, was more than enough. Help us to walk in that confidence, in that assurance, and help that assurance to birth a desire for you in the hearts of others. Jesus, we thank you that you, you lived God in the flesh while you were here on the earth. And when you gathered on the last night with your disciples, you, you took the bread and you broke it and you said, this is my body, which I am going to be, I'm going to be broken for you. And as often as you eat this, remember, remember what I did, that it was for you that by it, you are changed forever. Let's take the, the bread together. And say thank you, Jesus, for doing that for me. And then Jesus, you took the cup. And you, you shared with those disciples and with us that this represented the blood of your new covenant. You only had to die once, but it cost you everything. Every precious drop of your precious blood was built out for us. And someday you're coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. So every time we drink this, we remember you and the great cost. And we say, you have every part of me to exchange it for every part of you. Mm -hmm. Let's take it. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb.
with God, knowing that you are forgiven, washed clean by his precious blood, knowing that you are appointed by him to share his message wherever you go, through words, through action, and through prayer. And that as we purposely claim our communities for Christ, we will see his kingdom expand, explode Amen. on this earth as it is in heaven. So you have two communities to pray for, at least. You have the community you live and you have this one, because this is where your church building is. So this is your community, your church community to pray for. You have where you live, you have where you work, you have your family community. You have a lot of communities to pray for. And our God's big enough for all of them. Have a fabulous, fabulous week. And uh, I'll see you soon.